Hey everybody, NFT fans, welcome back to the NFT podcast. I'm your host, Eugene, aka Keeper MC. We explore the NFT space, separate the essence from the hype, and try to realize the potential of NFTs to change the world. Today, I'm very proud to say that I'm joined by Sergey Simonovsky. He had been among the first guys I met in 2017 when I joined blockchain space. He's web. 3.0 evangelist and the host of Citizen Cosmos podcast. Link down below. Sergey, I'm very happy to have you today. Thanks for joining me. Hey, everyone. Hey, Eugene. How are you? Uh, by the way, we have got acquainted in 2016, just to let you know. I think it was 2016, not 2017. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm joined 2017. Oh, oh. Was, uh, you were in Golos. Okay, but by the way, let's start with your story before we will deep dive into your perception and vision of NFTs. Could you please tell us your personal story? How did you get into the blockchain space and how much value have you added to the blockchain world in different projects in different roles? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, well, I first got introduced to the phenomenon that is blockchain in 2011, I believe. I was living to Russia from Israel, and a friend of mine rang me up when I was at the airport saying, hey, you know, have you heard about this thing called Bitcoin? I was like, no, and I don't want to hear about it. And um, anyways, long story short, you know, this is where, where it all started. Started with, with some Litecoin mining, actually. And um, eventually, you know, moved to one thing, then another thing, then a third thing. But then in 2015, uh, I started to work professionally uh, in, in a blockchain space. Uh, and it started all with a project, I think it was 2015, 16, something like that. It was a project called Golos, uh, which was run by back then by a project called Cyberfund. And um, yeah, from then onwards, I launched several projects as a CEO, helped several projects uh, as a consultant, uh, mostly with the centralized projects. I try not to work with uh, centralized entities as much as I can. And uh, lastly, I uh, work currently, I have my own project. You already mentioned it. It's called Citizen Cosmos. It's uh, a podcast in the Cosmos ecosystem. I believe, I hope we, 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 are, we are the best in the Cosmos ecosystem. And um, we also run some validator nodes. We, are, uh, we validate Cosmos Hub itself. We are top 55 or 56, I think. Validators validate a few other networks. Uh, we organize online events for developers. Uh, basically help uh, to build an ecosystem for such projects, for example, as Cosmos. Um, as cyber uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, as for the value, well, I think that's more to ask the people that listen to us and people who know what we do. I hope that we do bring some value, I really do. So that's a long story in, in two minutes, I hope. Um, okay, while we were preparing for the, this podcast recording, you said that you named NFTs as uh, the DNA of blockchain. It surprised me. May you please explain what did you mean? What does it mean, DNA and the blockchain? Well, to be honest, this term uh, I wasn't coined by me. I don't remember who coined this term, uh, DNA on the blockchain, but it goes back to CryptoKitties in 2017 when, uh, well, obviously, NFT being a non-fungible token and DNA being a non-fungible thing, um, well, you know, let's cut the technicalities around it. And um, this was kind of like coined by, in our group of, of, of acquaintances back then, trying to could actually engineer certain parts that are not fungible, put them together and create a certain value. And this is just what it's meant. Kind of what it says on the box. I know this might not be what you expected the answer to be, but uh, it's 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 as short as it is. Okay, get it. Uh, why did we face NFT hype in uh, digital art, for example, in recent nine months? What were the reasons of this hype, in your opinion? Well, this is a good question. Uh, personally, um, actually, on uh, Citizen Cosmos, we did a very good episode with uh, P2P. I don't know if you ever heard of P2P. I'm sure you have. I'm, I'm sure maybe your listeners have heard of them as well. They're one of the biggest providers 
uh, in POST systems. And the CEO and the founder is a good friend of my, Konstantin Lamashuk. And we had a very profound conversation with him about NFTs and about the recent hype. And he's involved a lot in NFTs. And just, just for the understanding, the guys manage over $3 billion of other people's money. So this is a big project we're talking about. And um, well, the, what, what we came to, the, well, not, it's not like a conclusion, right? It's just our thoughts, our opinions, is that the reality is that NFT hasn't yet seen its product market fit. And, you know, this is maybe why I kind of also mentioned DNA on the blockchain, because, well, you know, with NFTs, you could create so much more than just digital art. I'm not saying digital art is a bad thing. The opposite. It's great. It's amazing. I love art myself. I hold NFTs. I, 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 I even hyped as well. I aped into some of the, you know, popular hypes with NFT. And um, yeah, but, but the point is, is that if you look at um, DeFi, for example, right? And blockchain as a general, uh, DeFi is a very good example of a product market fit for the blockchain. And we can see how blockchain has absolutely exploded, uh, sorry, how DeFi, pardon me, has absolutely exploded the amount of transactions, the interest and so on and so forth. And partially, partially, you could say that NFTs and art has kind of played a role in making this popular, which uh, to my knowledge, no one is guessed. But again, I think that that world of even art, uh, not just digital art, but art itself, antiquities, and, and if NFTs, of course, can serve much, much, much more, much more. I'm not going to name the things that are possible, but there are millions of them, right? And the reason I'm not naming it is because I don't think that art is the product market fit. I think that we're still to find what is going to be the product market fit. Most likely, it will be some kind of financial instrument, for example, uh, a personalized loan, or uh, in my opinion, maybe even in the future, biology and DNA on the blockchain, really, really DNA and really personalized data, not just data that's encrypted somewhere in the form of NFT, but uh, let's not get into that, not, not to overcomplicate things. But I'm sure that that hype will in the future seem like, you know, 2000, summer 2017 compares to half a year ago uh, in terms of uh, DeFi, for example. I think it will be much bigger, much larger. The product market fit will be much clearer. Everybody will be much more involved in that. But let's see. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Time will show. Okay. How do you see the main pains, problems, and I would say diseases of the young NFT segment, which should be cured by developers and all the community in the nearest future? Uh, come again, please, Eugene. What is the question itself again? Uh, what are the main, how do you see the main pains, problems, yeah. and diseases of the young NFT segment we should cure in the nearest future? Gotcha. Um, well, well, first of all, find the product market fit. <laughs> I think that's a good one. Uh, well, obviously, partially kidding and partially not, because I think to find the product market fit is a pain uh, and try to, you know, I mean, I think a lot of the art thing was to do with crypto kitties and it kind of caught up and people are, ah, okay, let's go in that direction. Um, there is a lot of problems in terms of, you know, the cosmart contracts and, you know, some of them can't be audited because the projects don't have money or, uh, you know, some of them are audited by auditors who might not be as familiar with uh, ERC721 as the hours ERC20 and uh, ERC777 or whatever or other similar types of tokens. And that leads to the problem that uh, contracts will get hacked and do get hacked. And I'm hoping that in the future, there will be some kind of maybe, um, you know, um, what's the correct name for it? Like maybe some kind of an automat automated process that can help developers who code in Solidity or any other language that is to do with NFTs uh, because not just Solidity can do that already. We have more languages and more blockchains that are able to do that. Um, you know, I hope that there will be some kind of assurance audits where developers can, well, not just developers, maybe even anyone can run the code and understand if there's any mistakes in it before that contract actually goes to the audits. 
So yeah, assurance audits, product market fit to summarize. And um, what else? Well, I don't know. I guess those are the two main things that, that, that um, well, more use cases, more use cases, of course, more use cases. Yeah, the question about use cases, we do understand a potential of NFT as a tool, because NFT may represent any unique object, such in digital world or in physical world. What use cases of NFTs beyond the digital art we possibly will see in the nearest future? How do you see? Well, I have seen personally uh, being involved uh, specifically in the Cosmos ecosystem a lot, uh, but not just in the Cosmos ecosystem. I will tell you personal examples that, that I'm familiar with, not uh, something from the top of my head. So um, we can see some project developing games. We can see some social networks uh, that are minting NFTs. I'm sure that validators are one step uh, away from minting NFTs to their delegators. Um, that still hasn't happened. Uh, if we take Orbit, something as crazy as that, we can see how NFTs are used since a long time ago in a completely different way. So to prove identity, and I'm sure that we will go this way as well. Uh, again, in Cosmos, we, we have uh, other projects as well that are also working. Orbit is not in Cosmos, but, but if I go back to Cosmos, uh, we have projects like Cyber who are working with links, for example, yeah, where an NFT can prove uh, a specific object in a specific environment or whatever. Uh, the use cases are absolutely endless, seriously. We can just like, you know, name any single object that we can think about. The, to me, the biggest challenge, and I've already kind of mentioned that, but the biggest challenge that, I, that I'm hoping that will happen is actually putting uh, biological data and DNA on the blockchain as an NFT. And again, not just encrypting passport data, putting it as NFT and saying, hey, we have an NFT token as a passport. No, 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 no. I'm talking about somehow being able to verify that data uh, in a decentralized manner, in a non-custodial manner. I don't know if it's possible. I don't think that it's possible. <laughs> not today, not the, with the technology that exists today, but hopefully uh, sooner or later, somebody will slowly first come up with ID technology that will lead to some kind of new maybe NFTs or some, uh, you know, more, you know, complicated NFTs, which will eventually lead to the biological thing. But uh, we're probably talking, you know, maybe tens of years away, if not more, but let's see. <laughs> well, finally, Sergey, for those guys who might not be familiar with Cosmos, could you please explain what Cosmos is briefly and concerning to our topic, what Cosmos has Cosmos been doing on the NFT way specifically comparing with all the blockchain solutions for NFTs? Great question. Well, uh, first of all, uh, if you're not familiar with Cosmos or the Cosmos ecosystem, do go and listen to Citizen Cosmos. <laughs> I am sure that you will find a lot of uh, educational content and it really is. It's, it's, it's nothing to do with trading. We do talk about DeFi. We do talk about a lot of other things, but honestly, my biggest suggestion, if you don't like uh, to get your content uh, from, you know, from GitHub or from uh, reading materials, but you prefer audio, uh, go and look out for us. I'm sure you will find it. It's not very hard. Um, what is Cosmos? Well, Cosmos is the internet of blockchains. It's an ecosystem of, um, you know, sovereign and dependent blockchains that are run um, on the consensus that is called Tendermint. Uh, most of them use Cosmos SDK, or well, almost all of them. Um, and they are able to, the biggest, the prettiest thing is, is they are able to talk to one another and exchange data. And, you know, um, the simplest example in exchanging data is obviously sending tokens, but as opposed to just sending tokens, we can exchange any type of data, which means, you know, it could be a smart contract information. It could be, I don't know, anything, as long as there is an agreement between uh, two different chains. And that technology, it's called IBC, that allows to uh, transfer data between different blockchains uh, in a completely decentralized, non-custodial manner. Well, of course, um, you know, it's getting improved with time and time and time as we go, but IBC already function, already exists. We already have, you know, a place called a zone, sorry, called Osmosis, which is the DeFi, uh, the first like DeFi hub of, of the Cosmos ecosystem where you could stake, 
uh, you could, uh, you know, earn some uh, APIs, APRs, and so on and so forth. Um, and it works inter inter blockchains. It's not one blockchain. You could actually pull tokens from different blockchains within one second and very cheaply using your ledger, very safe. So basically, this is Cosmos. Cosmos is the Internet of Blockchains. It's a project that, uh, along with projects like ETH 2.0, Polkadot, Solana. A, you know, a nervous and so on and so forth, you know, trying to gather ecosystems, but every single ecosystem has a slightly different architecture. Cosmos has its own. Uh, I would say that it's the biggest and the fastest growing ecosystem in the blockchain space right now. Maybe Ethereum is, well, not maybe, Ethereum is obviously bigger and, and, and fast and growing faster. Cosmos in definitely second place. And um, yeah, uh, if you, again, not familiar with Cosmos, please have a look. It's, um, it, it opens up a lot of perspectives. As to the second part of your question, um, what is happening in the space of NFT in Cosmos? Well, again, I already mentioned like cyber uh, that is working on its own like NFTs, but that, that, that's uh, a very, uh, I guess, um, Long story away, um, then there is a project called Persistence uh, and Persistence is actually uh, an Indian uh, based project. Um, they work a lot with custodial services and they're trying to work a lot with, they actually as we speak, they write in NFT modules, NFT um libraries uh, so to speak so for other developers to be able so sorry nft standards and uh, for the token standards for other developers to be you know easily take those standards and create their own things we also run um uh, with citizen cosmos we run um uh sorry pardon my french forgot the english word uh hackathon sorry uh, just a while ago, uh, and we had quite a few teams uh, from the Russian space, from India and European teams who were also building on Cosmos with Cosmos SDK, and we had a specific prize just for NFTs. So there were several projects who have tried to build different games. So for now, to, to resume all that, what's happening with NFTs in the Cosmos ecosystem, on one hand, not too much because it's still very, very early days. On the other hand, there are I don't know, to my knowledge, at least about 20, 30 independent teams, independent blockchains and teams uh, who are in one way or another are, uh, as we speak, creating different things. Also, for example, there are projects like Starname who are using it for identity. Uh, I already mentioned persistence. I can't think of the top of my head now. I don't know. If, um, I feel like I too much on the spot, but uh, there is quite a lot. And if you go on cosmos.network slash ecosystem, uh, I think you can find uh, mentions of different projects by uh, what they do. And I think there's an NFT category there. So anybody who is really interested can go on there and have a look. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you are not familiar with Cosmos yet, please subscribe on the Citizen Cosmos podcast. Link is written below where Sergey is host Anna regularly talk with brilliant crypto minds from the entire world. It's super interesting. So Sergey, it's been a pleasure to understand your vision on the NFT segment and its future. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to the Nitsi podcast. It is supported by the Nitsi protocol. Please like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit the bell button for not missing the future episodes. Sergey Simonovsky and Eugene AK Crypto MC were with you. Thank you for listening and see you in the next episodes. Bye. Bye.